The Evangelical Free Church of America is an association of churches tied together by common beliefs and purpose, making disciples and sharing the gospel around the world. Who we are now comes from who we were before. To understand the EFCA, you need to understand the history that shaped us. The EFCA's early heritage began in Scandinavia. At the time, local churches were controlled by state governments. As influential Christian leaders encouraged daily Bible reading and prayer, revivals sparked. With more Bible studies flourishing, many Christians broke free from the state-controlled church. These early Free Church founders were committed to the inerrancy of the scriptures and zealous in sharing the gospel with everyone especially as they established new free churches as immigrants in the United States. Worshiping in their mother tongues, the Swedes formed the Swedish Evangelical Free Church, and the Norwegians and Danes formed the Norwegian-Danish Evangelical Free Church. Gospel urgency blazed through free churches, but they realized they couldn't send missionaries by themselves. They needed each other. To send missionaries into the field, free church leaders united and mobilized local churches to financially support and send missionaries. First, they came around Ellen Modine and financially supported her mission work in Utah. Several years later, the Swedish Free Church commissioned Hans von Quelen to start a mission in China. The work of these faithful leaders blossomed into what we now know as Reach Global. Their unity advanced their goals to share the gospel with all people. Yet free churches of the different associations sensed God calling them to greater unity. As English became a common language, Norwegian Free Church President Arnold T. Olsen planted seeds to build stronger ties between the Swedish and the Norwegian-Danish associations. Early collaborative efforts would unite to equip pastors through Trinity College and the publication of the Evangelical Beacon. Under the leadership of Arnold T. Olsen, a merger committee developed a statement of faith and guided the movement toward a successful merger conference in Minnesota. Delegates from 275 congregations, representing over 20,000 members, gathered on a hot day to vote and affirm the merger between the two associations to form the Evangelical Free Church of America. If the merger is going to be a success, we will have to make it a success by the grace of God. E. A. Helene, former Swedish Free Church president, became the first president of the EFCA until 1952 when Arnold T. Olsen assumed leadership for the next 24 years. Those 24 years proved significant for the foundations of the movement. Olsen cast a new vision and created a pathway to establish a healthy, unified denomination. He encouraged a spirit of diversity and urged members not to divide over minor issues of faith. Instead, he helped point to the core Christian doctrines that unite the movement. Additionally, under his leadership, multiple mission fields opened, and God presented opportunities to expand international ministries. Olson left a lasting impact that continues to shape the EFCA. Later, the newly elected Thomas McDill broadened its scope. He called for more church planting, and under his leadership, the EFCA rapidly expanded from 500 to 1,100 local churches. As the EFCA celebrated its centennial, McDill championed the EFCA's vision of reaching all people in the United States. I thank God for the Chinese churches we have, and the one Korean church we have, and the couple of Hispanic churches we have, one or two black churches, but wouldn't it be great to have a whole host of them by the glory of God? A diverse collection of leaders came from this vision, including African-American, Asian-American, and Latino-American church planters and ministry leaders, laying the groundwork for the All People Initiative. Paul Cedar recognized the EFCA's strength in preaching and teaching the word, but saw areas of growth in prayer, evangelism, and dependence on the Holy Spirit. He planted the seeds in these areas that impacted future leaders, including Bill Hamill. But I believe it's time for a recommitment to being a church planting movement in the United States. Under President Bill Hamill's leadership, the EFCA brought greater vision and expansion to many of its gospel ministries. From REACH students and REACH network to REACH global crisis response and global fingerprints, the EFCA paved new pathways and deepened existing ministries for greater ministry effectiveness. We 
champion and celebrate our biblical and theological values, our mission and ethos, what it means for us to be the EFCA. Over 1,600 congregations, 600 missionaries, and 17 districts, we have grown from small Bible studies to a diverse movement of churches united by common convictions and our statement of faith. With eyes on the future and hearts of gratitude for our past, we continue to pursue our mission to glorify God by multiplying transformational churches among all people.